What is going on you guys, it's J-Pro Gaming back with another video. This video I'm going to be touching on Showdown Extreme. I'm gonna walk down the final showdown which I did complete successfully. I'll walk you through what I'm thinking, I'll walk you through basically what to look for when facing Nate Pearson because that's who you're gonna be facing in the final showdown. A right-handed pitcher, keep that in mind when drafting, draft lefty heavy. Go over the mode slightly but this is more a walk through the final showdown because I'm assuming you know what Showdown Extreme is about and what to look for. Maybe even how to draft because some of these players you might not think you want on your team but actually have very good success for me in this video. Let's jump into it. All right, so as you see, I am down 20 to eight right here. We end up completing these first four. Uh, I did not complete that fifth one just because I didn't want to. I wanted to skip to the end just to ensure that I could uh, get that final boss. If you end up playing these and you end up losing one, say you play the first one, you beat it, you play the second one, you lose, you have to start all over. So you don't have to technically play all these mini missions. Equip perks are very important. So what I did here was I went heavy on the defibrillator and the ice water veins because you're gonna get significant contact uh, for two strikes and when you're behind in the count. The way I go about doing this is I take a ton of pitches, ton of pitches, I'm usually down two strikes and then I kind of attack, so that's why those are gonna help uh, those perks. But I went lefty heavy, went Juan Pierre just because I like contact speed at the top. That's Sam Hilliard actually. Him and Juan Pierre actually basically win this whole thing for me or they play a vital role in completing this, but that's the lineup I go with, who I drafted. As you see, I got righties on the bench and I can hit uh, righties pretty good. You're gonna go against Nate Pearson, who is a right-handed pitcher. The very final showdown, we're gonna be down 20 runs. So we're actually down 20 to eight because we did some of those mini showdowns and you got 30 outs to work with. As we know, Nate Pearson throws 102 miles an hour. You already start off with a runner on second base. I'm taking till I get two strikes for every batter. Basically what I do, I'm taking to two strikes. His control is not the best. He has 84 control. But as you see here, I don't swing once. He does have 96 stamina, so I'm trying to get that pitch count up as much as possible. As you see, we got a 3-2 count here. We are swinging right there. We get a good pitch. We're going to be just late on it, but it's, it's going to end up getting over outfielder's head. We're going to score a run there, so we got nine runs now. Still 30 outs remaining. Here we got a 2-1 count. We're taking pitches, taking pitches. Throwing 14 pitches. 13 of them are fastballs. Keep an eye on that. Make sure you guys are checking that out, the pitch analysis, because it does help. Again, we got a one-two pitch here. All of my perks are activated because I am going behind in the count. As you see, I strike out there. That's perfectly fine, that's now. We don't want to ground into a double play here. So a strike out there is fine. And then we're just going right to the next batter. Take as many pitches as possible. 0-2 count here, we get a slider down and in, really good pitch. We're gonna end up tagging here with 40 speed since it was hit deep. The double play is still in order, which is what you don't want. So here's Hilliard. Sam Hilliard used him throughout the entire run here. We can work the count 3-1, he's up to 23 pitches. We're taking a strike right down the middle. We end up striking out there, which is perfectly fine. That's okay, you still have 27 outs. Don't dwell on striking out too much. He ends up striking us out here as well at 102. So we got back-to-back -back strikeouts, 26 outs remaining. Again, do not get too flustered. I told you, I struck out there as well. So we struck out three straight times, which is fine. And make sure you're taking your pitcher out as well. That's very, very important. So we bring in Will Myers here. We already have a 3-1 count. We're taking this pitch no matter where it is, straight down the middle. Again, this is my approach. This is what I do and it does help. So 3-2 pitch here. If anything's in the zone, we're gonna be hacking. Swinging at a pitch outside of the zone. Strike out. So he struck out us four times in a row. Here we go with Juan Pierre, the 3-2 pitch here. We get a pitch back up the middle. The speed is going to help us out here. He ends up going home, but we're gonna score a run. So we have runners on first and second, still have 24 outs remaining. Let's see where his pitch analysis is. Again, not throwing many sliders, curveballs, or changeups. sticking to the fastball. You can sit fastball with this card, uh, this Nate Pearson. He ends up hitting us there, which is key. That was an 0-2 pitch. He ends up hitting us. We got bases loaded. 3-0 count here, we're taking some pitches. We're gonna be taking that one. That one's right down the middle. I probably could have swung at that. Uh, we're gonna be taking this one as well. Get that pitch count up. He's up to 52, that is 53. He just walked in a run, walked in a run. So take as many pitches as possible. So again, we have bases loaded, 24 outs remaining. He throws a fastball down. Uh, I probably should have taken that pitch to be honest. This is where it gets kind of tricky. We end up scoring here, but we get thrown out third base. Not good base running. I did not set my uh, second baseman to not go. So we do score a run though, 22 outs remaining. We got Cody B up here. Don't want to hit into a double play. Double play is a killer in this because you're gonna get two outs and you're gonna be bases empty and then you gotta start all over depending on where runners are. 2-2 two, two count here, we're taking every single pitch that we can. Anything's close, we're hacking. 
If we get a fastball right down the middle, we don't miss it. We get a perfect swing on it. That's going to be a two-run blast. So we got 14 runs now by this approach. Take as many pitches as possible. Hilliard is back up here. Just because I hit a home run, I'm not swinging first pitch. Taking as many pitches as possible. We worked this count up 3-0. Taking a pitch again, not swinging. He's going to walk us on four straight. Now we got good speed aboard. 81 speed at first, which is good. So we got a 1-2 pitch here to Jed Lowry. We end up swinging the pitch above the zone. We strike out there. That's okay, you can strike out, it's gonna happen. Make sure you are not pressing and swinging at the very next pitch, which that was a hittable pitch, but I didn't swing at it. So make sure you're not pressing after a strikeout because usually you do that. We got three, two pitch here. He ends up walking us on four again. Runners on first and second, down six. Will Myers up here. Taking one right down the middle, perfectly fine. Plenty of pitches to work with. He's up to 83 pitches here. We got 21 outs remaining. Throws a good curveball there. I thought that was gonna land in the bottom of the zone, but it goes below the zone. Juan Pierre here is two for one, as you see, which obviously is a glitch. Again, Juan Pierre, good speed, good contact hitter. I love him at the top of the order just because he gets on base. They have that speed aboard, you want that speed aboard. We got a two one pitch here. He dots a fastball right there. Be patient. He throws another strike, a very hittable pitch. You're able to swing at this. You guys take your own approach, do what you gotta do. Me personally, I'm taking two strikes this is what we don't want we don't want a ground ball there we end up hitting into it the speed pays off there so he ends up getting on first base we do not score a run so we got runners on first and third good speed at first base we got david ortiz here we are swinging early in the count we were sitting fastball i like to do this i did say i'm going to be taken until two strikes but we swing at that pitch if you're sitting fastball and you get a pitch to hit you got to rip it uh, just because I'm taking a ton of pitches doesn't mean I'm not swinging early in counts as well. But majority of the time, I am taking a ton of pitches. But if I get a pitch, I'm going to rip. So he's at 96, 96 stamina. He's thrown 78 fastballs out of the 93 total pitches. Remember, he's throwing a ton of fastballs. That's all he's going to throw. Majority sit fastball, then adjust. There we go. He just walked another. So bases are loaded. We're down five. 19 outs remaining. we got plenty of time to do this. I'm taking a pitch right down the middle, perfectly fine. You wanna get that pitch count up even more. He's at 98 pitches here. There we go, 0-2 pitch, that's perfectly fine as well. Now we're just looking to protect here, hopefully get a ball, which we end up getting there. So another added pitch to that pitch count. Get the pitch count up at 96 pitches. He starts getting a little bit wild and he throws a slider up. We're able to tag on this. So we're able to score. So we're gonna have 16 runs here. Obviously 96 speed, Juan Pierre, that helps. So that's another reason his speed does help here. You're gonna be hitting this entire time, obviously. So you don't need him in the field. 2-2 two, two pitch here, we get a fastball up. This is another thing you don't wanna do. We actually put a decent swing on it. The PCI wasn't directly on there. Ground into a double play, those are killer. As we get a hit through that left side, Bichette's gonna throw it to first, but it's not gonna be in time. There's Sam Hilliard again, 81 speed works. We're gonna score a run. Jed Lowry is 0 for 2. He struck out, I believe, once or twice. It did just show it. But we're swinging early in the count just because I don't want to attempt a strikeout again. You can take your players out as well. Make sure you keep that in mind. Depending on what you're doing with your player in that uh, scenario, make sure you understand if you're hitting well with him or not, if you're seeing the ball well. Jed Lowry, I was not. So you'll see what I do with him uh, next plate appearance. 3-2 count here. We end up taking it. Good eye there. We're going to walk. So runners on first and second, down three runs. A home run here ties it up. But we need four anyways. Again, double plays are killer. Uh, we get the runner to the third base, so 81 speed, that's good. So that run is going to score no matter what. We have plenty else to work with. I know we're going to score that run uh, just based on the way we are hitting. Taking pitches as well. I'm not trying to press here. Juan Pierre's up, contact hitter. Obviously, we're not trying to hit a dinger here. We're trying to just hit a good pitch, uh, put the good bat on the ball. And we get one back up the middle. So he's going to end up scoring there, and we're ended up going to beat this out. So that's where the speed comes into play. He ends up becoming a menace on the base pass. He gets an RBI there, so now we got good speed aboard, only down two runs. He throws a dot right there, strikes us out with a slider. Um, his, his energy got down all the way to red, and he was still throwing pretty high strikes. But we get a fastball down. We put a perfect swing on it. We didn't have two strikes there, but we did see a good pitch, so we hacked at it. If you see a good pitch, you got to hack. So the tying run is at first base. The winning run is up to the plate here. Again, just because I got a perfect swing, I'm not going to hack the next pitch. Still be patient. Work the count. Plenty of outs to work with. So he's going to throw a strike right down the middle there. He throws a hanger. So he threw a hanger there. And I saw it well enough that I swung on it. Obviously, I was early. We're going to tag here. We're going to go to third base. Home run. We'll win this thing here. Try not to get into a double play. Again, you don't want to hit into a double play right here. He jumps up in the count early, but we have active perks for all three behind in the count. Those three are active, so that does help in this situation. And we're going to get a slider down. We thought we got all of it. We put a good swing on it. We're going to hit it right to the track, right to the wall. Going to score that run. It's going to be 19 here. Winning run is going to come back up to the plate here. I actually considered taking out Max Kepler here, but I keep him in 
because with the amount of outs I have left, I still want his bat in the lineup. If I bring in a righty, he's no longer going to be in the lineup, and I hit really well with Max Kepler. So we keep him at first base. I was going to put a little bit more speed up, but uh, we decided to keep him in there. 111 fastballs out of 145 pitches. Make sure you're keeping an eye on this because he does throw a ton of fastballs. You don't even have to look at it. You know he's going to throw a ton of fastballs. He has this entire time. And he ends up walking us ball four, so the winning run is at first base. So this is where I take out Jed Lowry. Since I'm not hitting with Jed Lowry, I know I'm 0 for 3 with him. I'm going to bring in a righty here. I usually wouldn't do this, but just the fact that I know I'm not hitting with him. I got Aaron Judge, good power on deck. We're going to bring in Marcel Ozuna, good power against righties. I think yeah, today he's got 83 power versus right. He's going to start us off with a ball, winning run at first base. Uh, we're going to be patient here, but we end up swinging at this pitch right here, and we hit it deep. We're not going to uh, end up tagging here. We're not going to try and force any outs here. That would have been close at third, 59 speed. He did throw the ball off, but um, not taking any chances there. Aaron Judge is up here. One, two count, looking to protect, looking not to hit into a double play. Take pitches, work counts, get two strikes every time. That was actually the first pitch of the uh, this entire run that I was actually fooled on. He threw a good change up there, so we swing over the top of that. We got a 1-0 pitch here on Will Myers. All right, we worked the count full here, 3-2. Ends up throwing it outside. So the winning run is on second base now. We got Juan Pierre up. He is 3-3 three three on the day. He's got three runs scored. He's got two RBIs, I believe. But we're taking pitches, still being patient, working counts. Eight outs to work with. The winning run's on second base. Be very patient. We get a pitch to hit over the middle of the plate. We don't miss it. And then there we go. Sam Hilliard is going to score. Juan Pierre is going to get the game-winning hit. As you see, Juan Pierre, Sam Hilliard are the players of the game. So Juan Pierre ends up being player of the game. We end up walking it off. Uh, he was four for four. Look at this. He had four runs, eight RBIs. And then Sam Hilliard, uh, he had three runs scored. He had an RBI as well. So these two players, uh, keep an eye on them. If you get them in a draft, I would highly suggest looking at them. A lot of people want, you know, the Boppers, Ortiz, Kepler, Bellinger, all these big boys. But I want uh, a different route. Went Juan Pierre. Uh, as you see here, out of the 162, he threw 119 fastballs. Sit fastball and adjust. Take pitches. Get to two strikes. Take pitches. Uh, we ended up opening these packs. We ended up not getting anything. As you saw, majority of my bats. I was getting to two strikes and then you protect get the pitch count up make him become a little bit wild he does not have the best control he's got 84 control so he does throw a lot of balls I technically don't even know how many walks he had that so we end up getting Christian Yelich because of that so we're gonna put him in left field we're gonna debut him here in the next couple days uh, if I have a little bit of time so we're gonna take Ty Cobb out move MVP Trout over to center field and then put MVP Christian Yelich in left field hopefully this was helpful hopefully seeing it you can skip right to the end you can go balls to the wall you can go down 20 nothing and try and attempt it that way uh, you're not going to get the perks that you need. You're not going to get, the obviously, the more diamond players that you want. Go lefty heavy. Go lefty heavy with these players because you know you're facing Pearson at the end. If you guys don't follow me, all my social media links are in the description below. Make sure you take a peek at those. We just hit 12K followers on Instagram. Again, as always, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.